As we move into specific examples of nucleophilic acyl substitution and carboxylic acid derivatives, I wanted to begin by talking about a framework for thinking about these reactions as a whole and trends in reactivity. Before we get into those though, one thing to realize, and we've mentioned this previously, is that nucleophilic acyl substitution allows us to perform what's called functional group interchange on carboxylic acid derivatives, doing things like transforming an acyl or acid chloride into an amide, or an ester into an amide, or an anhydride into a carboxylic acid or carboxylate. These are functional group interchange reactions that don't change the oxidation level of the compound, but do potentially give us useful functional handles in synthesis or biochemical contexts. For these reactions to work, the key general principle is that the overall process must be what's called exergonic. In other words, the free energy change of the overall process must be less than zero. And in order for this to be the case, and we've talked about this before as well, it must be the case that the product anion, X minus in this general figure, is more stable than the reactant anion or the reactant nucleophile. And so what we can do to develop a general framework for thinking about nucleophilic acyl substitution is think about the leaving group ability or the stability as an anion of the heteroatomic group linked to the carbonyl compound. And you see that in a hierarchy or in an ordering here on the right. The most reactive carboxylic acid derivatives in nucleophilic acyl substitution bear a good leaving group linked to the carbonyl carbon. And these are things like acyl chlorides, acyl sulfates, are another example. Anything with something we would consider a good leaving group linked to the carbonyl carbon is going to be extremely reactive in nucleophilic acyl substitution because of the strongly electrophilic nature of the carbonyl carbon and the ability of this carbon-chlorine bond, for example, to break toward chlorine to generate a stable anion. As the leaving group ability of the heteroatomic fragment connected to the carbonyl carbon goes down, reactivity goes down. For example, in switching from chloride to a carboxylate, in an anhydride, we decrease the reactivity a little bit since a carboxylate is not quite as good a leaving group as chloride. Looking at the next step down, we have an ester, and esters tend to be less reactive than anhydrides because anhydrides kick off a leaving group that is a carboxylate, while a plain vanilla ester would have to kick out an unstabilized alkoxide leaving group. Once again, it's all about the relative leaving group ability of this group linked to the carbonyl carbon. Moving down yet further, we have amides, which are less reactive than esters because nitrogen, being less electronegative than oxygen, is less stable with a negative charge than the oxygen is. And finally, at the very bottom, we have carboxylates, the conjugate bases of carboxylic acids. And these are the least reactive of all because the anionic oxygen in a carboxylate is a terrible leaving group. It's not a leaving group at all, right? This can't depart with a pair of electrons as that would put a minus two charge on the oxygen atom. And this tends to be the ionization state that we find when we place carboxylic acids in the presence of a good nucleophile. The nucleophile spontaneously deprotonates the acid and generates the carboxylate. So watch out for carboxylic acids under basic conditions or strongly nucleophilic conditions. What you're really dealing with is a carboxylate, not a carboxylic acid. With this reactivity kind of ladder in hand, we can think about spontaneous substitution reactions as involving movement down the ladder. So the conversion, for example, of an acyl chloride to an anhydride or an ester to an amide or say an amide to a carboxylate, these directions down the ladder should be spontaneous. And here are some examples. So treating, for example, an acid chloride with a carboxylate salt gives an anhydride. This should be spontaneous. Treating an anhydride with an alkoxide nucleophile generates a plain vanilla ester and the carboxylate leaving group, and this should be spontaneous. And treating an ester with an amine nucleophile gives an amide and an alcohol, and this too should be spontaneous. These all represent movements down this reactivity ladder. To move up the ladder, we can't just use nucleophilic acyl substitution. We can't treat, for example, an amide with an alcohol and accept, expect anything productive to happen. However, by using the right reagents to transform our starting material into something with a good leaving group on it, we can move up the ladder, and we'll see examples of that later in the course. Acid chlorides are an extremely electrophilic, extremely reactive class of carbonyl compounds that react with pretty much all manner of nucleophiles to generate any other type of carboxylic acid derivative. And I wanted to look at some examples here. So for example, we can treat an acid chloride with a carboxylic acid, 
or a carboxylate. I'll just put a negative charge here in parentheses just to show that this could be neutral or anionic. And actually, in both cases, we'll see spontaneous substitution of the chloride by the carboxyl or carboxylate group to generate an anhydride. In the presence of alcohols or water, we see acyl chlorides reacting to give either carboxylic acids or esters. And I'll just show an example here of an ester type reaction where the alkoxy group in the alcohol displaces chloride to generate an ester. And of course, when water is the nucleophile, we get a carboxylic acid. And this is a common reaction of acyl chlorides and tends to be a problem. These are water sensitive reagents because water is a good enough nucleophile to displace chloride. Now with amines, we have to use either a primary or secondary amine in order to generate an amide. And you'll see why in a second, but acid chlorides react extremely rapidly with amines, primary or secondary. We need a hydrogen, in other words, on that nitrogen to give amides. The reason we need a hydrogen is that hydrogen is deprotonated at the end of the mechanism so that we end up with a neutral amine. You can imagine if we had a third R group here, this would lead to a positively charged nitrogen, and that's not going to stay that way. It's going to potentially dissociate or one of the R groups is going to react further. So we need to use a primary or secondary amine to make this work. In a laboratory context, acid chlorides are really the best acylating agents we can ask for. As weak a nucleophile as a carboxylic acid reacts with an acyl chloride. And so this is a great method for installing an acyl group on a nucleophilic heteroatom, nitrogen, oxygen, oxygen in a carboxyl group, and sulfur, which I haven't shown, but sulfur would work fabulously to form a thioester as well.